should I leave my body in the corner of a room or make sure someone will bury me? Hi, I'm Kian and this is Every Film's Made Twice. I am Iranian and like Iranian films. In this video, I want to talk about The Taste of Cherry. First, I recommend if you have not seen the movie, be sure to watch it and then watch this video. I think Taste of Cherry is worth watching. To be or not to be, that is the question. It has been about four centuries since Shakespeare asked this question in Hamlet. Many things have changed in these four centuries, but the question is still puzzling. The question of life, of death, of man, of me, of my death and of my death by myself which is called suicide. Many literary, artistic and cinematic works on suicide begin with this question. This is the question man asks himself, as Hamlet asked himself, to be and continue this life or to free myself and say goodbye to life forever. This is a question, a question that everyone may get caught up in one day. Although the taste of cherry does not begin with this question, the film looks at suicide from a different angle. In fact, the taste of cherry speaks of life, of the red of the sun at sunset, of the full moon shining at the night, of the four seasons, of the variety of fruits, and even of the taste of a cherry. The location fits perfectly with the atmosphere of the film. The hills around the outer skirts of the city with a winding dirt road and a few trees that grow at great distances in these hills. Workers at work and giant machines sift soil and make sand. Mr. Betty's wandering in this particular location is similar to his wandering and perhaps man's wandering in the world in which he lives. Mr. Betty asks three people to do his unusual request. Under a pretext, he asks them to ride in his Range Rover, talks to them sincerely, drives through the maze of mountain dirt road, and finally makes his request. A Kurdish soldier, an Afghan seminarian, and a Turkish taxidermist. Each has different reactions to Betty's request. The Kurdish soldier escapes, the seminarian preaches to him, and the old taxidermist accepts his request. The dialogues that Betty has with these three people are extremely brilliant. Betty's attempt to persuade them and schedule them with money is a strange endeavor. An exhausted man who wants to commit suicide is also provident, thinking about his body being buried so that no one can find his lifeless body, or perhaps no one realizes that he has committed suicide. The attempt is paradoxical. Because if Betty really thinks about death, what does it matter what others will think of him after death? The film has a fresh idea. The whole film is Mr. Betty's attempt to put that one-line idea into action. Now that I want to kill myself, what do I do with my body? So Betty has dug a hole under a tree on the hills and wants to be buried there. He's looking for someone who will throw dirt on him when he takes pills and lies in that hole. Naturally, he cannot ask his relatives. So he looks for a stranger, a worker, a confident person to do it for him for money. Kurosemi does not explain to us humans, he explains the relationship between them, friendship, love, emotion, mutual understanding and empathy, the relationship that is formed especially through dialogues. Then Betty says to the soldier, you're like my son, do you want me to beg? He tells the seminarian, I ask you to be a true Muslim and help me, and most importantly, that the old taxidermist, despite accepting Betty's request, tries to dissuade him from his decision and says, if you go, I'm your friend, if you stay, I'm your friend, in any case, I'm your friend. We you see a special form of relationship between humans that has emerged in this critical situation. Betty explicitly tells them that he wants help and needs them, but it is not clear whether he this request is considered help or not. I know that suicide is one of the deadly sins, but being unhappy is a great sin too. When you're unhappy, you hurt other people. Isn't that a sin too? When you hurt others, isn't that a sin? But if I kill myself, it is. I think that God is merciful and so great that it is impossible for him to want to force us to live. You can sympathize with me, understand my pain, and show compassion, but you can feel what I feel. I'm not mad. I have a problem. Right now, I really need your help. What does help mean? These are Mr. Betty's arguments to convince those three people and justify his request. 
On the contrary, it is good to point out the old taxidermist arguments, talks to Betty more than others. If we all chose this way out of every tiny problem, there would be no one left on earth. Don't you want to see the full moon at the night anymore? The stars in the sky? Don't you want to see the four seasons again? You want to close your eyes forever? But Betty doesn't give any answer. Maybe he doesn't have an answer. Or maybe as he said, no one feels his pain. When two characters are talking to each other, the sound of a horn and the movement of a heavy vehicle sometimes makes us not hear the words of the actors. We lose the sound of the characters. Sometimes when the car is moving in the mountains and we see an extreme long shot, we hear the voices of the characters clearly. These make us hear the sound more vividly. The sound editing is artistic. We first get acquainted with the voice of the old taxidermist and after a few minutes we see his face. Remember the security guard who makes tea for Betty. We only hear his voice and when Betty says goodbye to him, we see a close-up of his face. Perhaps Kiarosami wants to emphasize the character's words and opinions more than their faces and facial expressions. Maybe he wants to arouse our curiosity. However, less a film cares about sound, especially diegetic sound as much as taste of cherry. We can also talk about filming and photography, some things we do not see which seem important. For example, we see Betty's house behind the window and curtain vaguely. We do not see any clear shot of the hole that is supposed to be the grave during the film. Even when Betty stands by the hole and points to it several times and tells the Kurdish soldier, get out of the car and have a look at the hole, maybe you'll fill up to it. The camera still does not show us the hole. It is as if the camera framing is deliberately trying to annoy us, doesn't want to capture what we are curious about. The frames are minimalist, magnificent and creatively selected. The ending of the film is avant-garde. When Betty lies down on the grave he dug himself, dark clothes arrive. The full moon appears behind the clothes. It rains and it gets dark everywhere. A little later we hear the footsteps of the soldiers marching and see the cameraman and other crews. And then Kiarostami himself and Homayun Arshadi who played Betty. The ending of the film may be a way for Kiarostami to tell us that you are watching a film. It may be reminiscent of the other world we go to when we die where it is said we will be happy forever. Remember that Betty said that the best time of my life was the military service, and now we see soldiers marching at the end of the film. Now Betty can talk to the director, have fun and smoke with him. Maybe our life is the same. Like a movie when we die, we go behind the scenes. The film was highly acclaimed and received positive reviews. In 1997, it was awarded the Golden Palm at the Cannes Film Festival. This was the first Golden Palm of Iranian cinema and the last one. Conclusion Can always count on an old taxidermist.